Hi everyone, this is Deekshit. Welcome to my channel. In this particular video, we will gonna discuss about headless services in Kubernetes. Before discussing about headless services in Kubernetes, so let's see how cluster IP service will work in uh, Kubernetes. For example, let's say I have a stateful set, so of three replicas three. So when when I create that stateful set, it will gonna create three pods, and also depending on your application. So if you want to access your application outside. Kubernetes cluster. So then you have to create a service of type node port or a load balancer. So if you want to access your pod uh, application, so inside your cluster itself, then you can create a cluster IP and by which you will be able to access your application. For example, so let's consider now our services cluster IP and we have three pods. So when you get a request, for example, you, you got a request onto the service and the service will choose a pod, a random pod out of these three and it will redirect the request to that particular pod. And when when the second time, assume like the first time when the request got, so it, it has been sent to this particular pod, when the second request comes, so it is not guaranteed that it will gonna go to this pod itself. It will go to any one of the pod across three, these three. So and here uh, service is acting as a load balancer. So whatever the request it will gonna come, it will redirect to any one of the pod. So what if like I want these kind of behavior? I want to have a communication between pod to pod. So this is like this pod is there, right? Assume this is a first pod. I want to have a communication between the second pod. And the second pod should have the communication uh, with the third pod. If I want this kind of behavior, or sometimes like let's say I want to get the request, whatever the request that I'll gonna get it from the cluster. So I want to redirect it to only a particular pod. So th these kind of scenarios, so is it possible to handle it in Kubernetes? Yes, it is possible. So that is that uh, by using headless services, we will be able to achieve these kind of things. And here uh, our services uh, working as load balancer. When you use uh, uh, headless services, what happens? It will gonna create DNS entry for each of the pod and by which we will be able to access, we will be able to communicate with each and each pod separately. So now you might uh, come across a question. So where do we exactly need these kind of setup? So when you know, when you're working with a stateful applications, especially databases like MySQL or MongoDB, or in case of like Elasticsearch, so uh, you you need to have headless service. So if you don't have headless service, for example, let's say uh, as you can see on the screen, so I have three replicas. Assume I have three replicas of my SQL. So this is a stateful set. So it will be created with the ordinal index. So which start from zero, so that's why zero, one, two. For example, let's say uh, I have a cluster IP to access this MySQL. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, cluster IP is kind of a load balancer. Whatever the request it will gonna get, it will gonna uh, re redirect to a particular uh, pods. It, it, it is random. It's not like it will gonna send all the request uh, to MySQL zero itself. So let's say I'll get some write request. So assume like uh, my cluster IP uh, will redirect it to MySQL uh, zero pod. And now uh, write operation has been executed and which is successful. Again, let's assume I'll get one more write, uh, write request. So again, it will go to MySQL two, and then it is also successful and you'll get the response back. And after this, after some time, assume like I'll get a read request and now the request is sent to MySQL. So it can send to any of the pod, but I'm assuming, let's say it will send it to MySQL. So now what happens, the returned value from MySQL, it will be empty because none of the insert queries has been run on this MySQL one. So one write query, write uh, request has been executed here. So that means insert command and one insert command has been executed here, right? So there is a data inconsistency. The data from here, in zeroth replica and uh, second replica, also it is different. So there is no sync between each replica and also there is no data consistency. So this is not acceptable, right? When you are working with the application, when you query the database, if none of the other write operations are going on, it, you should get all always the same output. So this is a problem with cluster IP. So this particular scenario can be handled with headless service uh, very easily. 
So let's see now. Uh, so now we have seen uh, the problem with cluster IP, right? With the headless service, so we can easily uh, solve this problem. So for example, the same three pods I have, assume like stateful set I've created, I have three replicas, MySQL zero and MySQL one and MySQL two will be created by uh, stateful set. So because uh, in deployment, we will have some ash code as I'm using a stateful set, it will gonna create the pods with ordinal index. So that is the advantage. So when you have a stateful applications, it is always better to use stateful application uh, because even, even pod, if it destroys because of many reasons, if somebody manually destroyed or due to some um, uh, system errors or like the pod failure, so it has been restarted. So then it will come up with the same name, but when it comes to deployment, it will gonna, the name of the pod will be different because the ash code will be changed. So that is also one of the major advantage uh, when you go work with stateful application. So go with state stateful sets itself. Okay, now assume like I have a headless service. So now uh, what I'll do is uh, because of this headless service. So I want to choose one of the replica as my master. I need to have one master and rest all other things as my slaves. So now when I get a uh, right, uh, right uh, request, so through headless service of my primary database. So I'm assuming this as my primary database and all other are replicas of my primary. So whenever I get uh, a write request, so by using headless service of my SQL zero, I'll gonna perform write operations in this particular pod. And also uh, always I'll gonna take the backup and I'll gonna execute all those, whatever has been created. I'll take a backup and I'll execute in this as well. And then, so from this, my SQL one, I'll gonna take backup again, and I'll gonna run all those things in my SQL two. So by which, when I do this one, so now the data in all my three replicas are in sync, and there is a data consistency. And also I'll create one more cluster IP. Uh, so this is because uh, whatever the read operations I'll get, right? I'll gonna point those read uh, requests to this cluster IP, wherein, wherein it will gonna, choose any of the pod, it is gonna send the request. I'll get the same output because now there is, uh, the multiple writes is not happening. The writes are happening on only one master replica and I'm, I'm taking the sync of that replica onto my other replicas. So even if you have more replicas than uh, the previous peer, assume like I have uh, one more replica which will come up, uh, my SQL3. So it will gonna take the backup of my SQL2 and it will gonna execute uh, all the data backups onto that my SQL3. So now uh, let's see this in a practical, uh, whatever the files that I'll gonna uh, use for this particular demo, I have already uploaded those things. So uh, there is a folder services, under that I have a folder, my SQL headless service. I have uh, given all the files that I'll gonna use and also I've given a detailed explanation. So you can go ahead and you can read about this. So now uh, before creating the you know, files, so we will see before deploying all the stateful set services config map. So let's go ahead and see, so what is there in that particular config map services and stateful sets. And before that, I'm gonna verify my Kubernetes cluster. Get all, I'm gonna check if anything is there. Nothing is there. And also I'm gonna check, is there any nodes which are attached to this cluster? Yes, my nodes are working and which is in a ready status. So now let's go to those files. So I've already cloned those things onto the machine as well as um, uh, to explain it, I have taken it in a uh, Visual Studio code. So first uh, let us create, let us deploy a uh, config map. So why config map before, because like these files should be available before you create a stateful set, okay? And this is pretty straightforward. API version v1 and kind as config map. And also one prerequisite, uh, if you want to work on this particular uh, use case. So you need to know a uh, dynamic provisioning or a static provisioning. If you have an understanding about the volumes, so then it will be better. And also I have uh, used uh, uh, a small script. So it is better if you have a little idea on shell script as well. And then, uh, uh, so coming onto this config map, API version is v1, kind is config map. 
and the name is mysql depending on your project requirements you can give whatever the name you want and then uh, see, these are the config uh, files i want to copy onto the primary database so in my case uh, if you see that slide so my sql0 is my a uh, primary database so this file has to copied on that so we will going to see like what logic i'm using to uh, to copy this file only onto the primary sql primary sql replica and other replicas in my case there are other two replicas right so i'm assuming those things as slaves so this particular configuration has to go onto that slave slaves so then uh, so we will going to uh, create this so before that let me explain the services as well and uh, here i need two kinds of services right so you can see from the slide one is headless service for the right operation and to keep my replicas in sync so i want to create a headless service and also one more thing to read if i have any read request i'll going to point to this particular cluster ip so i should be able to read it from all the replicas so this is the definition file for that uh, the, again uh, pretty straight forward api version v1 kind service and the metadata is my sql and this is also this these are uh, very important and whatever the names that you're going to give you're going to definitely use it because it will going to create the dns dns entry by using this names itself and uh, the spec is ports and uh, under that like ports we have mysql the port for mysql is 3306 and this is very important when you set cluster ip tag to none so then it will going to create a headless service so if you don't give anything so then by default the service type is cluster ip this cluster ip service will be created and uh, so here the same it's a carbon copy of that itself that definition itself so again api version v1 kind service metadata my sql read and the labels i'm giving my sql again you want to uh, make sure uh, these names are given properly because we will going to use this services and we will point while reading from the databases and the ports mysql 3306 and the selector this selector and the port selector should match um, so this also be should be taken care okay and uh, now so let's go and let's uh, check a stateful set so before that uh, as it is a stateful application <coughs> i want to store um, all my data uh, i do i shouldn't lose my data right like whenever if a pod restarts so i shouldn't lose my data so that's the reason i am creating a volumes i am creating a volumes in gcp for that uh, i am using a dynamic provisioning so if you don't know dynamic provisioning please um, uh, read about that and if you know at least a static provisioning you will get to know i mean it's easy to know what dynamic provisioning is and here uh, so to uh, to go with dy dynamic uh, provisioning you need to create a storage class and you need to refer this storage class in your uh, stateful set so by which you will gonna uh, it by itself it will gonna create a pvc and the volumes will be attached for each pod and the storage class is here uh, api version is storage.kh.io/v1 and the kind is storage class and metadata i'm giving it as manual so this name i'll be referring it in my stateful set i'll gonna show you that and the provisioner if you see i am using a gcp pd and the type of uh, the disk that i am taking it's pd standard there are a couple of types right i am just taking pd standard and these are the settings that i am going to using so i'll just uh, i mean uh, fs type and replication type so you can read about these things um, in detail uh, in kubernetes.io itself so so now let's jump on to the stateful set the main part so the stateful set the configuration is a uh, bit lengthy but i'll going to try to explain uh, this uh, bits by bit and also i'll give a brief so i have written a few of the shell scripts so uh, in in this particular uh, stateful set we i've used a, a few shell script so when in like uh, by which i am configuring like one as master and another one as slaves and like how the sync up should happen so all these things are done by this shell script itself that's why i mentioned if you know shell script it it is added advantage to understand these concepts so api version uh, for stateful sets it's apps/v1 and the kind of stateful set metadata i'm giving mysql 
and the selector match labels, it has to match with the services. And the service name, I'm giving my SQL. So, and the replicas, which are three. So as I showed in the slide, the one is master, two are my slaves. And here, so in this, I have used four containers, two init containers, one my MySQL actual container, and another one is sidecar container. So if you don't know what sidecar init containers, I have a video on that. So wherein like you can check out uh, what are init containers, why those are used, and so why a uh, sidecar container for what, for what they are used. I have a video on that. You can go and refer it on my channel. And the first init container, uh, so which is init MySQL, the name of that container is init MySQL, and the image is MySQL, and the tag is I'm using 5.7. And also, uh, here if you see, I'm executing some bash script. So let me briefly explain about the script. So set iPhone EX, I'm executing the script in a debug mode. And um, I have here something like host name. So when a pod start uh, inside the pod, uh, when I execute this host name, that in the, obviously for the first time, like when I create the first replicas name, it will be something like this, right? My SQL iPhone zero. So this is my host name. So here I'm just comparing it with some regular expression. So I'm just checking like whether the name of the host name in the name of host name. So there is an integer or not. So obviously it will be there because um, every time when uh, replica stateful set creates your pod, it will gonna add ordinal index. So that's the reason integer will be definitely there. And also you need to make sure uh, while giving a name, name uh, for uh, your uh, stateful set, it is always better don't include the integer. If you include the integer, assume like if you give the name of your stateful set something, MySQL, um, so like this one, two, one, double six, what happens? So ordinal index will be attached at the last and card, this script won't work fine because I'm taking, I'm just taking this value, whichever first the integer comes in, I'll, I'm taking this value and I'm using it for my uh, script to validate like which is the master and which is not the master. So that's why try to avoid this uh, numeric values in the name of stateful name of the stateful set. Okay, and now when I execute this, I'm gonna get the host name as MySQL uh, minus zero. And this is a regular expression. So it checks for any integer is there or not. If integer is there, then it will be proceeded. As else, if integer is not there, I'm doing an exit one. The stateful set, de uh, the deployment of stateful set will be stopped there only. So stateful set won't be created. The pods will be failed there only. And so obviously it will be successful. And now I am just interested in this particular value. So zero is there, right? I'm interested for the first pod I'm talking about. The same holds good for all other pods. Okay, I'm just interested in that zero. So the ordinal index is equals to, there is a some, uh, this is uh, the function wherein it will get me the first match, whichever the, whichever the string uh, matches for the first, this uh, regular expression, I'll gonna get that particular value here. So in, in my case, right, I'm just comparing it with this regular expression. So assume the host name is my SQL minus zero, right? I'm just checking for the regular expression minus any integer between zero to nine. Okay, yes, at the end, if, if you see dollar I've given, right? At the end, if any integer is there with minus, prefix to that particular integer, I need to take that value, okay? So that is what base, uh, base sorry, bash underscore rematch does. So whichever uh, the uh, string that I've given left side of the equals, right? It will gonna match compared with this regular expression. The first match of the regular expression will be given to me. So this is what the one is. The first, the match in the value that I have supplied. So in this, uh, my uh, first match will be definitely zero, minus zero. So the value is zero, right? I'm gonna take the ordinal index as zero. And with this, so also now I have an ordinal index, right? And also now I'm preparing a server dot server minus ID dot CNF. This is a configuration file. Uh, I am trying to keep in all, all the ports because I wanted uh, for these for some operations. 
while execute the queries i'll gonna uh, come to this so these values are used in future so that's the reason i am just doing echo my uh, mysql d and i'm putting it here so it's just echo this value will go into this particular one and also if you see uh, i am doing server uh, minus id is equals to i'm doing 100 plus ordinal index so in my case ordinal index is 0 so the value will be 100 and again it is concatenated with this file and uh, we have created if you remember we had created uh, uh, config map right so that config map i'm using it here if you see in volumes so i have uh, conf which is a type volume type empty directory and the config map and also we have uh, a volume a uh, climb template which is of data so this this also i'll show you like where i've used it so three volumes are there uh, one is uh, conf and config map and one is to make my application persistent, I'm using GCP disk as my volumes, right? So wherein like I'll gonna keep all my SQL related data in this particular folder. I'll gonna show you that. So here, if you see, um, uh, so this is this part we were in, right? So depending on ordinal index, see if my ordinal index is, is equals to zero. So then whatever the config map. So if you see the config map, is mounted on this particular path mnt config minus map right in that the there are two files one is primary.cnf and replica.cnf if ordinal index is zero as i mentioned earlier if it is a zero then i'm considering that as a primary that's why i'm just copying the file which is there in config map to my a pod which is uh, not the pod i'm just keeping it in mnt uh, conf hyphen d so it's a temporary so the same mount path the same mount path i'll gonna use it in my actual mysql application as well so that now that time the primary not cnf will be mounted on my sql application mysql uh, container so here i've used right if you see and the same like this is my mysql container i should be using that the same same like etc mysql conf d so type of conf Okay, and um, now, so uh, we have decided uh, which is uh, primary, which is replica. So for the first time, uh, when it is MySQL zero, so this part will be executed. For the second time, ordinal index is definitely not is equals to zero. So then it will go to uh, this particular part and it will gonna copy the replica.cnf. And then uh, next one more uh, thing I'm taking it, one more, uh, like init container uh, this is because uh, for example uh, assume like uh, i've created three replicas and after a few days i'll gonna create one more replica of um, mysql that time this is uh, pretty useful so in that case it it, it should take the bar uh, take the data from its uh, layer, peer replica and then uh, it has to execute all the queries to get the data right so that part will be uh, handled by this particular container if you see again i'm executing in a debug mode and here i have something like iphon d iphon d means if it the supplied value if it is a directory if it is exist and if it is a directory then it it will be true else it will be false so that's why i'm just checking it if it is there, then I'm just doing exit zero. So that means my uh, particular container is uh, init container ex executed successfully. And also here I've missed one thing, I guess. So if your host name doesn't have any integer, then I'm marking it as exit one. So that means if uh, I need to set my init container or the exit status with non-zero value, that means the stateful set will be errored out. It won't be able to create it. So that's why these things are also very important. And then uh, if it is there, so then uh, I'm just making exit zero. So that means uh, already the cloning data clone clo uh, data is already there. So that's the reason uh, I'm just um, uh, skipping it. And then next one is I'm doing skip the clone for uh, primary as I've given a commented, right? Like if it is, uh, like again, I'm just taking the ordinal index, the same logic that I've explained here, the same logic I'm using it. So when it is equals, so then I don't need clone at all because that is the master one. So I don't need any clone uh, for that particular replica, right? So that's why I'm just uh, skipping it if it is um, 
uh, a master. So if it is not master, so then I'll going to execute this ncat. ncat is a command, you, it is very similar to the cat command. So to read a particular file, if you see here, so I'm using my SQL and dollar ordinal. So for example, let's say uh, this is executing for my SQL iPhone one. So in that case, ordinal index will be one, right? So minus of minus one is that like the previous, the peer container, peer uh, a pod. So in, in it will be replaced with zero, my SQL zero dot my SQL from that particular pod read and create the backup. So these are the commands which are related to uh, database. So if you see the image name also, image that I'm taking also extra backup, right? So, so these are uh, like uh, commands related to MySQL. I won't um, go in depth of, of about those commands. So, so this is how like uh, if you want to uh, take a clone data from your peer pod. So this is how I'm doing it. And um, so then again, volume mounts. So I'm just keeping whatever I created uh, in this particular uh, volume, uh, in this particular path. So then again, these paths are referred in my, definitely in my application, MySQL container. You can see data, I'm just referring it again here. Okay, and whatever etc my conf d again, if you see in my containers list, I'm mounting it. So whatever I have created in init containers, again, it, it'll be there in volume, I'm referring it in my actual application container, which is MySQL. So this is about init container, I'm just, um, uh, using uh, two containers, one is to create the clone and another one is to decide which is primary and copy the configuration file uh, of which we created through config map onto particular pods. And then the next one is actual MySQL container. So this is where my database is running. So I have supplied few of the uh, environment variable. So one is my SQL allow empty passwords. So I don't want to keep any passwords. So that's why I've just uh, kept like my SQL underscore allow empty passwords and then mount paths. So whatever the configuration files I've created previously, I wanted those things here, right? So that's the reason I'm mounting it back. So all those files which I've created with the unit containers will be placed in my uh, this application container. And here, if you see, I have liveness probe and readiness probe to make sure our database is always up and running and it is ready to take the uh, load. So that's why uh, when you want to make sure your application always up and running, if it's stuck somewhere, if you want to restart, then you will go for liveness probe and readiness probe uh, until unless your database is not ready. So you shouldn't accept the request. So that's why um, I am having both the things. And then with this, so I have uh, uh, two init containers when one application container is done and another one is extra backup um, uh, sidecar container I, I'm using. This is also a database related activity. You can see I'm again using uh, that particular image. And here, uh, if you want to tell in a uh, layman words, like this particular script. So this is a big script. So this particular script is used uh, for, for example, let's say uh, you have uh, you have some um, a replica, which is restarted. In that case, uh, like, the data while it's restarting much data might be added right so it it has to know from where uh, till where i have data and from where i need to fetch the data from my peer pod so related to that and also you need to supply the data assume like uh, this this script is running for my sql minus 1 it has to give the uh, like clone files for my sql 2 right so this particular uh, script is used for that like giving your like um, your next pods uh, the day uh, the clone data and like if it stops what has to be done so all those things I have written it here so this is quite a big uh, shell script uh, script so that's why I'm just like you can go ahead and you can read about this I'm just telling like why it is used and then this is this will be running with my application container so that's why the sync between all the containers will be always there. And again, the mount points. So whatever uh, application container to this particular one to be there, it is uh, th those things I have used in volume mounts. And also volumes, I've already, as I've already mentioned, one config map and one conf directory. And um, I'm creating a 
GCP disk for each and every uh, pod that I'm going to create to make my application persistent, even though if it restarts because of many reasons, so data, data will be persisted. So this is a stateful set. So it is uh, kind of like a big stateful set uh, definition itself. But yeah, so once you get to uh, know the logic, it will be pretty easy. So that's why like uh, get these files and read about this cell script again, and you'll get to know what the script is for, and you'll be able to execute it. So now also the, um, we have seen what are all the things which is present in the files. Now let's go uh, to the Kubernetes cluster and we will gonna deploy it. So my Kubernetes cluster is up and running. So what I'll do is uh, this is gonna do, uh, so we have already checked, nothing is there. So let me go inside Kubernetes folder. So here, the service folder. So I've already mentioned, right? I've uploaded all these files onto my GitHub already. So these are the files. So let's create kubectl, apply if and f, and it will be like config map will be created fast. And then my SQL services and the stateful set and the storage class, all the things has been created. So let's verify that kubectl get all. So you can see uh, it will take a little time because uh, two init containers are there and two, one is application container, another one is um, uh, sidecar container. So it might take a little time. So let's wait for that. Pivo. And meanwhile, uh, so let's go to GitHub and I've given command.txt. Now we have created a, a MySQL, right? But we want to verify it, right? Uh, so, so that's the reason I have few commands. You can also execute these commands once you create your uh, MySQL setup. So as in um, showed in this particular slide. So we will gonna execute these commands and let's verify it whether it will be, it is working properly or not. And the first command, so if you see here, uh, kubectl run MySQL client. So I'm creating some MySQL client. And inside that, so if you see, I'm pointed to, this is headless service. Like I've, I'm pointing it to uh, uh, like MySQL a zeroth index, the first pod. So in my case, if I want to show in the cluster, so for this pod, I'll be pointing it to, okay. So let's copy. Now you, you will be able to see uh, all my three uh, parts which are up and running. So let's cancel this, clear the screen. And now let's go back to uh, this particular commands. And if you see, I'm just executing uh, all these queries pointed to uh, my SQL zeroth headless service. Okay, so let me copy. The simple queries, I'm creating a table called uh, test.messages. And also I'm creating a, a column called as message. Under that, I'm just inserting two rows. One is hello and another one is hey. So let me copy paste it. And when I do execute, sorry about that. Okay, I guess I've uh, executed for the second time. So that's the reason. So I guess like whatever the volumes that I've created uh, before, like before doing this demo. So th th those things are already there. So that's the reason it says like test database is already existed. So now let's check uh, so whether this particular messages are there and that or not. So again, this is also one more client. So when I do this, obviously I'll be able to see some output. Yeah, see that because uh, in the, my previous execution, whatever the volumes that I've created, which are not deleted, I guess, uh, in the GCP. So that's the reason I'm again pointed to that and I'm using it. So that's the reason, like even though if it is deleted, restarted, so it will gonna have the persistence. The data is not lost. Okay, so I have the table uh, wherein a low message. If you see here, I am just pointing you to my uh, cluster IP service. So if you look at the service, see the cluster IP name is my SQL 
minus read. So if you see that, so that's the reason I'm able to read. But now to make it even more little interesting because now I don't know from which server I'm getting output, right? So I'm getting the output, but uh, I don't know from which server I'm getting it. So to know that um, I have one more query, which is kubectl run mysql client. I'm just running a loop for every one second, if you see. So on this particular um, uh, uh, pod, so what I'm trying to do, I'm, create, I'm running a, a loop, while loop, so sleep for one second and execute this particular command for every, every one second. So let me copy this. And now here, if you see, uh, I told you uh, why I'm using that uh, MySQL in the shell script, in one of the shell script, I've used that, right? Stateful set. Here, if you see the server ID, unread, ordinal index, I'm just keeping it in server ID, right? So this is where to, to see that only, I'm just uh, uh, making that entry in that particular configuration file. So when I execute select art, art and server underscore ID, I'll be able to see from which server I'm getting the output. Okay. And in my case, like if it is coming from uh, zeroth, so then I should get 100. If it is coming from uh, the first MySQL hyphen one, so then it should be one at one. So, and so on. Okay. And then um, I'm doing uh, one more uh, row that I'm gonna creating in output is the time. So that I'll gonna get and the message. We have a table called test dot, uh, test dot messages, right? So the, from there, uh, I'm getting one column, which is of name messages. So now let's go to the cluster and let's execute this. So now you, you will be seeing like, this is a read operation. You can see I'm pointing, pointing it to read, MySQL read. So you will be able to see now this particular request is served by 100, or 102, 101. Randomly, the cluster IP will gonna select and it will gonna send it to the pod. So that's why you can see the random server ID I'm giving it. But the value is same. Now the sync, see, you can see the values are same. The, the table values are in consistent way. And there is a sync between all three pods. And also these two things that I'm adding uh, to check like from which server I'm getting the output. Okay, so you can see from the output, uh, each request has been served by different, different pods. So this is how, uh, when you want to uh, like have a, a database uh, created by using Kubernetes. So when you want to maintain the sync between uh, your replicas, so this is how you will do it. And so th this is where like headless uh, uh, service will come into picture to solve the problem uh, with like, uh, if any internal communication between pod to pod, or if you want to, uh, 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 if you want to uh, communicate to only one particular pod. So in that cases, you're gonna come across um, uh, headless services. So this is one of the uh, mostly uh, a common use case wherein you're gonna use headless service, but there are many other scenarios as well. So wherein you can uh, use headless service. So yeah, so that's it for this video. If you like the video, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you, have a good day.